unstoppable, innovative, exciting. No, I'm not talking about Andrew Graham Dixon. I'm talking about design. It literally shapes our daily experience. And whether we notice it or not, it's everywhere from supersonic jets to the humble toaster. So tonight in a culture show design special, we've got everything from cool classics to visions of the future where machines have taken over the world. And if that wasn't enough, the latest round in the epic struggle of man versus machine is underway behind me, where a human designer is going head to head with the latest 3D printer in a race to build a scale model of Big Ben in less than an hour. A short while ago, I got them started. Over here, exuding a menacing confidence, we have the machine, the MakerBot Replicator 2. While over here, representing mankind and manpower, we have Dominic Wilcox. So, Dominic, how confident are you feeling? Uh, not really confident at all. <laughs> well, let's get this build-off started. Are you ready? On your marks, get set, go! Well, they look like they're about a halfway mark now, so while they get on with that, we're back to the main business. The great Bill Shankly famously said, football isn't a matter of life or death, it's much more important than that. And whether you're a fan of the beautiful game or not, there's no doubt it's deeply embedded in our towns and cities, a world in which local lads can become global superstars. And with fame comes fashion, so embedded in the game now, it's even inspired an exhibition at Manchester's National Football Museum. We sent fashion industry insider Paula Reed to find out more. <laughs> And while we wait for that, let's see how our design race is hotting up. Over here, Dominic, you're looking quietly confident, I'd say. While over here, the machine, where well, we can definitely see that's recognisably Big Ben. Next tonight, to a little known but fast developing corner of the design world. Hacking, it's not quite as ominous as it sounds, as I found out earlier. Take one everyday product and adapt. Redesign. Customize. That's a hack. Hacking is something we normally associate with illicit computer programmers or the ugly side of journalism. In the world of design, though, hacking doesn't involve government inquiries or legal warfare. True, it has a subversive edge, but it's more creative than destructive. A process by which people can redesign everyday products for their own purposes and make do and mend for the modern era. Hacking used to be a fringe DIY activity, but now it's got so popular there's even a website dedicated to hacking products from IKEA, boasting thousands of redesign ideas for your flat pack furniture. And now hacking could be about to become an everyday activity. As of next month, a new material designed to make it easy to hack any home product will launch in DIY stores across Britain. Sugru, which means play in Gaelic, has been voted a more important invention than the iPad. It comes in a pack like this. It feels very much like Play-Doh when you take it out of the pack. So you can mould yeah. it into any shape at all. Mm. It has really good adhesive properties, so it'll stick to pretty much anything in your home. And then the magic part is that overnight it will transform into a really durable and flexible silicone rubber. Wow. God, yeah, it's incredible, isn't it? So how has Subaru been used? Initially, um, I guess it was really well adopted by the creative community, but we are starting to see signs now where it actually is being used by all kinds of people, and this is something that um, everybody can do. Sugru has built up a vibrant online community with people sharing hack ideas and photos. So this is one of my favourite examples of an actual design improvement. It came from a dad in Germany who sent us a photo on the internet and his three-year-old was really into photography. So he built the Sugru up around the camera and these clever walls so you can see they're flexible and rubbery. So in, if it drops, instead of breaking, it will actually bounce. And it makes the design a lot less uptight. <laughs> Because so yeah. once design product design say so uptight, isn't it perfect? Yeah, that's exactly it. How we behave normally with our gadgets, we kind of worship them and think they're perfect. But actually, he made it his own and made it work better for him. Yeah. Do you see it all revolutionising design in the next few years? It sort of seems like we're in an interesting period at the moment. Yeah, well I think that one of the most exciting things actually is that the visibility of the improvements and redesigns and hacks that people do. I mean, I hope that 
the engineers are looking at all those colourful Sugru repairs and seeing like actually we better make it that stronger or we better make the shape different and whatever. I mean, it's like total crowdsourced um, product development. Some designers like Asa Ashuk are taking this a step further and encouraging hacking at an early design stage before the product is even made. This new digital forming software enables a non-designer like me to personalize Asa's products, in this case, a lamp. I can change the color, the height, and even adapt the fin design and overall shape. As a designer, why would you want someone else meddling in your designs? Product designers design products and objects for people to use. And for me, it was always very important to have element of interactivity. So I'm always looking for opening a door to the user, you know? But do you feel that you're sort of relinquishing power? Because, you know, we've been brought up inside of the big designer, the designer that designs these amazing objects. And you're basically giving power to the consumer, aren't you? Yes, it's true. But I see that uh, actually as empowering the designer to empower the user. The technology enables the designer to add another layer on top of the design product. It's the design experience. So users at home, when they play and co-design, they will say, oh, this is a nice experience. So the experience will become part of the design. What happens if, when you're co-designing something if the co-designer creates something that you don't like? This is a difficult point because sometimes it's, it's horrible. You know, really horrible. <laughs> But uh, if I want to make sure that all the variations are almost like 80% approved by me, then I'm giving less freedom to the user. So I'm constraining the experience to such a level that it will always come out well. I see the user as a partner. Uh, so there's a partnership, you know? It's time for the moment of truth. What will Asa think of my co-design? There it is. It's nice, <laughs> what actually. do you think? Don't be too harsh. No, it's actually quite nice. I really <laughs> think it's nice. Quite nice. I find it really interesting because you start to think about things really quite a lot, and probably yeah. more than you would do maybe in a shop. And you're questioning your kind of judgment yeah. again, over yeah. and over again. It's and I like that. You there know? are some big decisions to make. Yeah, yeah. I guess you do in a way become, in part, a designer. I guess that's what a designer does. But you start to make associations and you think about things and you're thinking about is, yeah. the look of it all the time. Yeah, I think it's also about giving some of the designing joy to the user. I'm not quite sure about the base now that I've seen it like this. Hacking is liberating design. It's no longer about star designers handing us products that we have to accept. It's a partnership, a collaboration, and the implications are enormous. Frankly, nobody knows where design's gonna head next, but isn't that exciting? Right, that's it, the race is over, and it looks to me like a dead heat. The machine's made an absolutely perfect model of Big Ben, but there's something about Dominic's creation that shows us life in us old humans yet. In a few years' time, though, who knows where this machine will have taken us. Finally tonight, Images of Millinery Magic from Philip Tracy. A new book out next week documents the key moments in the incredible story of his hats that have captivated the fashion world for more than 20 years. Good night.